We've had a great series. This is the last one. This is our last message on the Rebuild series. We took a break last week because we had Pastor Chris Price here with us. Man, he's a great preacher. We're really blessed to have had him. But this is it. This is the last message. And Mike, if you remember a couple weeks ago, he talked about persevering. That was so good. And I'm going to finish it up. If you've read Nehemiah, it kind of... Uh, it stops about going through the actual character of Nehemiah around chapter 7. So we're going to stop right there. But I'm going to talk about this morning, about finishing strong, about this, this last stage of this rebuilding process. And I hope God's been working in your life. I genuinely do. Our prayers that through this series that you've seen your faith grow, you've seen God at work in your life, or your friend's life, or your family's life. That's why we've been doing it. It's an amazing story. We've had the privilege. I think I, I feel really privileged to have uh, read it a little bit more than I, I ever have before and go in some depth to it. But here's what I'm going to end on is this fascinating point that he actually finished it. He completed the wall. And there's lots of things going on. We've talked about the conflict, the, the confrontation he had to go through, all the things he had to go through to get there. But he got the job done. It says in... Um, I'm going to read from Nehemiah uh, chapter 7, verse 1 to 5, just to get going. It says, After the wall was finished, I had set up the doors and the gates. The gatekeepers, singers, and Levites were appointed. I gave the responsibility of governing Jerusalem to my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the fortress, for he was a faithful man who feared God more than most. I said to them, do not leave the gates open during the hottest part of the day. And even while the gatekeepers on duty, have them shut and bar the doors. Appoint the residents of Jerusalem to act as guards, ever on a regular watch. Some will serve as sentry posts and some in front of their homes. In verse 4, it says, at that time, the city was large and spacious, but the population was small and none of the houses had been rebuilt. So my God gave me the idea to call together all the nobles and the leaders of the city, along with the ordinary citizens for registration. All right, so what a great verse. I love it. I love that he got the job done, and then he started passing on the right things to the right people. He passed on his success. He didn't take all the accolades. He didn't take, he didn't take all the glory. And then I love the verse in verse 5. So it says, so my God gave me the idea it's so clear to me that he's still giving God the glory. He's still giving God the credit for all that was going on. It wasn't all his ideas, all his strength, but he's giving everything back to God. I want you to think about this. It's rare these days that you hear of people doing things, having an idea, and actually seeing it to completion. I find even more so we were joking around just a minute ago about millennials and Gen Z. We're really bad at actually following through with things. We've actually been ingrained in some ways that it's okay to quit. It's like, hey, you don't love it? It's all good. Just quit. Like, you don't love your job? Just get out of it. You don't love school, the classroom? Just quit. And, and a lot of us haven't operated in a way, I think especially Gen Z, because they've been, it's, it's, a, it's always been told to them in, in, in some families, in some circumstances, not everyone, that it's okay just to drop out. And there's a time and place for that. But then here's, here's what, it, what it starts ingraining and instilling in young people is that when things get hard, we drop it. When things get stressful, we leave. When things get to be too much or there's anxiety, we quit. So then in life, when life gets hard, when there's things we can't quit, when we, when we should never let go of, there's things that we should never drop out of, but we're, it's in us to do, and it's been told to us a lot, it's okay, if you don't like it, get out of it. So things never get completed. Things don't get done as regularly. We can think about marriages or relationships or careers, education. It's like, hey, you don't like it. It's okay. There's a way out. And I think that's where it, it, it ends up bad for us. That's why I think this story in Nehemiah, him actually finishing what God put on his heart, is so significant. It says in Philippians 1.6, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. I wonder, <coughs> excuse me, I want to speak to all the unfinished dreams out there. All the hearts that are half healed. 
all the walls that are just at that final stage that need a little bit more repair. You're at this last step and something's hindered it. God's been even working in your life in the last few weeks in, in this series, the last couple months. But something has stopped that last step. The hardest one. I believe when the finish line is in sight, when you've been working so hard at something, and then you see the end is near, and that's when I think a lot of us can give up. It's like it's too much. You've heard me talk about this bike ride we are planning and this fundraiser we did. Some of you gave to it. Just want to say how grateful we are. But we ended up biking to Cultus Lake and back a couple weekends ago. If you're wondering how great it was, it wasn't that great. It was really hard. It was one of the hardest physical things I, I've done. And it was 30 degrees that day. We ended up biking 162 kilometers. At the beginning, it was great. We were excited. Even the news showed up. We felt so proud. We got to Cultus Lake. We felt really proud. We had lunch. Then, then we were biking back. And it was on the way. It was right at the end. We, we started and finished in Langley. And, and we arrived back in Langley. And we had less than 10 kilometers to go, probably even five kilometers to go. And my body was just telling me, it just was like, I can't do any more. I can't go on. My legs, like every muscle was hurting. My mind was just numb. And then this little hill came. And I could have done it at the beginning just easy, just breezed up up. But when I looked at it, and I knew over the hill we were done, but this a hill, and, and I knew if I got off my bike, I would never get back on it. That's what my body was saying. I knew if I stepped off, I was not going to finish. I was going to walk or get in the support car. That's, that's the place my body was at. You're probably thinking how surprised you are because I look so fit. And you're right. I know. It's very surprising. But I did. At the end, and I, told, I had to tell my, my body not to step off the bike, that I had to get over the hill, and I had to finish. I think some of us need to take on that mindset. When God's been working in you, he's been stirring something in you. And I know he has. I've talked to some of you, all these amazing things that God's been doing. And you're seeing the end of this particular thing. And then things can get hard. And that gets frustrating just at the very end. Why do we not finish things? Why do walls not get completed? Why do we feel in life that sometimes what things God has stirred in us and started, that for some reason they get dropped even at the end of the process? I think there's a few reasons I want to talk about them today. I want to stir us up today to get, to get these final stages on this last step when the finish line's in sight. And knowing the foundation of when it says in Philippians 1.6, it's God who began the work and he will continue it. Even when we're right there. I think the first thing is that some of us lose sight of what God spoke at the beginning of the process. And then as we're closer to the end, we forget what he's done. We forget why we even started. We forget the word of God in our life. His word is life. It needs to be our foundation. Too often we sway with reasons. Our mind drifts. People influence us in a different direction. We need to hang on to God's word. It says in Colossians 2, verse 7, let your roots grow deep down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Some of us, I think we've, let, we've heard the word. We've heard God challenge us. We've, we've, even in this season, we've been inspired by the Holy Spirit. But then we've even forgot what God was doing a month ago. We forgot the verse we were reading two months ago or what God prompted us to do. We got too busy again. We got lazy again. That's what I'm trying to target this morning. That's what I'm coming after. Because some of us are close to finishing what God has started. So are your roots deep in Him? Are your lives built on Him? Then our faith will grow strong. Another thing is I, I think we're not used to finishing things like I mentioned before. Some of you find it hard to complete big things and you find it really hard to complete little things. And then when God puts something big on your heart, 
Like when God speaks to you, he gives you a vision, he gives you an idea, he gives you your, 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 some motivation in your, your marriage or whatever it might be. Then you wonder why it's hard for you to see that through. I think it's because you have a, we, I won't say you, I don't want you to get mad at me right now, but you might get mad at me in a little bit. Maybe we have tendencies that we never complete little things. We always, if you're like me, I don't know about you, but I'm at my desk, I have a bunch of sticky notes everywhere. And there's a bunch of little lists. Then I find like two hours later, I'm halfway through all of those tasks. There's like multiple half-written emails. I'm like, what am I doing? So I need to get, then get focused and start doing those things all the way through. You know, you all have a friend. We all have friends like this. They always say, hey, let's go hang out. Or, hey, we should do that. And you're like, great, let's do it. Like, hey, we should go on that hike. I'd love to do that with you. Like, absolutely, tell me when. And they never, t- they never let you know. Or, or the person always said, oh, I'd love to do that one day. Oh, I've always wanted to play soccer on a team. I've always wanted to do, climb that mountain or go visit that country. But they never do it. They never actually follow through. This type of, these, I have a couple friends that it bugs me because it's all these little things they could just go and do. Even, I remember a person, when we talk about a restaurant, they say, oh, I've always wanted to go there, but I just never have. You're like, well, just go. Just go and do it. I think some of us need to stop being talkers about things. Like, oh yeah, I want to do, I, I've always wanted to, but just go and do it. Because I think this is the mindset that cripples us when we're trying to get things done with God. Because we can never follow through in our individual life. We never follow through with these little things. Just completing a task. Getting it done. And can I just give you practical advice? If you're one of these people who kind of like putters around with lots of different things, always has a lot of things on the go, but none of them ever get seen through, I think you need to stop that. I, need, I think you need to get in the habit of getting things done, picking something, seeing it through, and finishing it. That's just free advice for some of you. It says in Luke 16, verse uh, 10 to 12, it says, if you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy with worldly wealth, who will trust you with the riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? That's some pretty heavy hitting things right there. So don't get mad at me. I'm just reading from Luke here. But let that challenge you. If you haven't been faithful with these little things God's given you, because God puts a lot of things on our on our plate sometimes. Good things, ways he wants to challenge us, our people in our lives. But I think a lot of times we miss it because we're, we're wanting the big things from God. We're wanting these world-changing, wall-building around cities things. But then through your seasons of life, maybe God's put a ton of things around you that you've never seen as significant and that you've taken and never followed through with. If you are faithful with little things, you will be faithful with larger ones. If you are not faithful with other people's things, why should we be trusted with things of your own? You guys, some of us need to, we need to get this. Some of us really need to get this. Here's why. You're thinking like, why would you be coming at me like this? You're thinking like, just chill out, man. Hey, it's okay. You're going to be fine. You need to just read a little bit more of Luke 16 here. But here's why, because I honestly believe, this is why I threw this in there, that God has really big things for you. He's got things he has for you that are going to be changing people's lives for him, for his glory. And I think because you've maybe been slow or not been as faithful or trustworthy with some other things, maybe those things aren't coming through like you want. But maybe this is this motivation, hey, What's around you right now that you know God's put before you? It's not insignificant to God, but we need to be trustworthy. We need to be faithful with these things. We need to follow through with these because I know there's bigger things. I know there's bigger things out there for us. God always starts us with here. 
Um, an example for me with this, I used to, in, in the youth ministry world, there's some, or in the church world, sometimes people think, okay, you come in, you get a junior youth position. And then you work your way to a youth position. And then maybe the church will trust you to deal with their young adults. And then you feel like you've made it. And then you get the associate pastor job. And then you get the senior pastor job. That's a lie. Because then all these people that start out with junior youth, and what a precious age. Sure, they have a lot of energy. Too much for me. That's why I love that Spencer does it at our church. He's so good at it. But we think because it's just junior youth, that's sometimes the mindset I heard. And someone said it to me once when I was speaking with, at their youth ministry, and they said, oh, I just, I just can't wait to move up. I'm like, why would you say that? Because this age group is no more important than youth. They just thought it was flashier to say, I'm the youth pastor. But I told them, I said, I think you need to let God work on you in this junior youth role because it is a huge importance. I learned that too when I was running it in junior youth at my previous job. I just need to slow down and say, I love these kids. And I don't need to grow and get out of this ministry, but I need to own this ministry and make it great because it is. Another thing I think that inhibits us from finishing on this last stage is we take things into our own hands. This is a hard one. This is like my, this, I'm preaching to me and to you at the same time right here. Too often people know what God has told them to do. We know what he said. We know what he's spoken. And then we start the process. We feel excited. We're like, God's in this. This is awesome. God's moving. We're building. Things are changing. And then as we get closer, we know we're about to wrap things up. We see the finish line. Things are coming together. Then we start doing it our own way. We start taking things on ourselves. And as we get towards the finish line, it's like, yeah, I did it. I did it. And we're, we're making decisions and we're not going to God like we used to. It's all about us in the end. We think we know maybe better than God. Maybe our way is better, is faster, is more efficient. It works better for our schedule, our routine. This is classic for guys. Men, can I talk to you just for a second? Women, you can just be amening me all this time. This is going to really, this will help. Maybe you've been praying for your husband to hear this type of message right now. Men, this is classic for us. We like get, we, we get convicted of something. We feel, okay, God, yeah, I'm going to do that. We're humbled. We let God in. Our wives' prayers are answered. And then we start to do it our own way. We're like, yeah, I'm going to change this. Yeah, for sure. God's convicted me. All right, God, what do I need to go? But then we don't make the step. We say, yeah, we're going to start it, but we, we don't end up going to counseling. You don't end up talking to that coach. You don't end up going to see this person. You don't go to life group. You don't follow through with church. Maybe you go two or three times or for two months, but then you stop. As soon as it gets too much, it starts conflicting too much. You don't stop and ask for directions. You start the process, you get directed, but then you don't stop and continue asking for directions. Guys, we need to get out of these type of habits of continually letting God come in. And we say, yeah, okay, there's change, I will get there. But then as soon as we get close, we take it all back again. And we start doing it our own way that works best for us. Let me tell you, it is not best for you to stop letting God move in your life after the process has begun. It is not best for you and your marriage for you not to follow through and go to church, go to life group, go to counseling. That is not best for you anymore. Whoa, that was good. I don't hear any amens because no one's here, but I know that was good. Because I think some of you need to follow through. You need to actually finish the process. You need God. We need God until the very end. Not just to start, not in the middle when it's hard, but at the very, very end. When things are being come, we need God. He started the process. He works with us in it, and he's going to see it through. He will complete it. So let him do it. So let God finish. Let God finish the work he started. That's the, that's the core of this message. A verse in Proverbs we know. 
Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. And he will show you what, which path to take. Do not depend on your own understanding. This is the hard part for all of us, is that we think we understand once the process has been started, once the wall is beginning to come together. We know from Nehemiah, he continually went to God. Even when the wall was half built, even when he was done the wall, he kept giving God the glory and said, this is a God idea I was given. I'm coming in a little bit hot this morning. I'm coming in hard because I know God has things to finish in our lives. He has things to see all the way until completion. There has been things already in the summer that God spoke to you right when we started this series and you've let drop. And you've stopped letting God continue to move. They're undone. We are so close. We need to let the God come. We need to let him continue to move. We can't take it into our own hands when the finish line is right there. That's not the time to let God out. That's the time to let God in and say, God, I need you just to help me cross the line. I love this clip I'm going to show you. We're going to watch it together. It's one of my favorite clips. You may have seen it. It's a beautiful clip of an Olympic runner and, and, and what happens at the end of the race. And then I'm going to explain. So let, let's watch this together. How special was that clip? How, if you've never watched it, that was, that was that runner's dad running in. So as he tore his hamstring near the end of the race, his dad fought through the crowd, jumped through security, even told security to get out of his way. And he ran to his son. And the finish line was there. I love even that moment. I don't know if that, that moment maybe touched your heart when, when the son just broke down. And his dad, he just wrapped his arm around his father and, and his, his dad said, let's keep going. And there was some, it's not in this clip, but there was some lingo. There were some words passed between the father and son and the dad just offered, you, offered to walk him all the way. And they finished the race together. His dad brought him to the finish line. Mike highlighted this a couple weeks ago when he spoke as well. But there is no way outside of God. There's no way to do life outside of him. When we're getting to that finish line and, and things have been tough from the beginning and there's been all these things, all these hurdles we've overcome, all these things that God has continued to move through. And then we get to the end and then there's something that comes up again. Like for me in that ride, it was that little hill. It's like, are you kidding me? Like I was seven and a half hours on my bike that day and I thought, I don't want a stinking hill again. But that's where we need to invite God in again. Say, God, would you bring me through this last phase? We need his strength to finish. There's no point. There's no point in, in, in doing all these things and letting the Holy Spirit and letting God come in and then saying right at the end, we're good, I'm good. Like, just let me take it. Let me go from here. There's no point. Can I say this from experience? If you haven't already, there is no Wisdom, there's no common sense in trying this way. Here's where we need to dig deep and say, God, even more than the beginning, I need you. Even more than in the middle when it was really hard, I need you now. More wisdom, more power, more grace. Pastor Paul is coming back in a few weeks now. And in my world, this has been a big deal, me carrying the church for Pastor Paul. Things needed, we wanted to bring new, uh, new structure internally. Not new vision, but new direction. And to carry out Paul's vision in a more efficient way, in a way that we really believed in as staff. And I really took that on. And he's coming back in a few weeks. To say I'm not tired would be a lie. I feel the weight of his role and I know he's carried it so beautifully. But as, as this little thing that God's been doing is coming to an end, I recognize even more my need for God. I recognize even more as I see the end and me carrying this for, for Paul that I need the Holy Spirit in a new way again. 
I need, to, need Him not to leave me as I walk it through, but I need His power even more. I need more of His ideas. I need more of His strength and protection. That's my mindset coming into the end of this time for me. Is that I need more from God. And I hope for you that you pick up on this. That we need to ask for more direction. Husbands, we need to ask for more direction from God in our, in our, in our marriage. Not just when we see a problem, but when we're coming to the end of the solution. Families, we need to rally together more and seek out God through the whole process. We need to keep finding ideas and ways that God can, t- can continue to work even when we get to the finish line, like Nehemiah did, and pass things off well. And say, hey, this is what I know God did, but I think He can continue to work as I do this and this. That's what I want for us, church. I want for us to see what God has done, see what He's doing, and then say, here's what He's going to continue to do because I'm going to stay in stride with Him. I'm going to finish strong. There's a difference between finishing the race or finishing the process or what God started or this healing or the rebuild and just getting it done. But there's also finishing well and being proud and saying, I gave everything. I put, I I left nothing in this tank. I I remember it so clearly one time I was in a race and I was coming around the corner and and I heard my, one of my close friends, Jason Ballard, he was yelling at the top of his lungs. He was yelling. He said, leave nothing in the tank. And I just remember being pretty tired and I just like, I exploded with energy. I felt like Hussein Bolt, like this speed just, just went. But I think that's what some of us need to do. Like as we're getting to the end, that's when we invite more of the Holy Spirit in. We say, God, I need you even more so now. We look back on these verses I mentioned and say, God, you started it and you will see it through. I know you will. I want to go deep in God in this time. And I want us to continue. I don't want God, what God, what we've been preaching about, what God's been stirring on rebuilding just to end because we stopped talking about it. But that just continues. But you've got to continue it with God. You've got to continue to let God in. You need to always be asking the Holy Spirit, what's next? Where do I go next? What do I do now? What's the next big thing, Lord? What's the next little thing that you would trust me with that I can do with you? That's my heart for us, is that we keep finding these things and God would continue to trust us with his kingdom and we keep seeing more and more people come to know him because we're trusted with the little and then he he sees us and he works for us with the big. And if if, if, if you've lost sight of God, my prayer is that you come back to him. Like Mike preached a few weeks ago and Chris talked about last week, coming back to the Father. That beautiful scene of the Father running out and like putting his arm and carrying us through. I want to pray for some of you. I think you just need to let God carry you through this final stage. I want this for the church, for God to keep carrying us through. For your families, that he would carry your family through. Your friends, your relationships. We need to keep getting things done and I know the Holy Spirit's right there to help us.